So inside of cultivating this experience of creating a movement, I want to share not just my successes, but I want to share my failures. Welcome to the stage, Nicholas Fairley. How do I serve the tribe? What can I do? What's the next thing I can do? The most unselfish thing a person can do is expand. No other option besides hard work. How they can live this three-dimensional lifestyle. YouTube, welcome back to another episode of the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Show. And in this show, I'm going to share with you three ways that turning your mess into your message could transform your entire business. Now with that, if you're brand new here, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button. Also, there's a tiny bell right there where you can ring the bell. And in ringing the bell, you're going to get notifications when we drop new episodes, which we do three every week from Q&As to trainings like this to expert interviews where I've interviewed over 300 plus multimillionaires, Navy SEALs, professional athletes, Olympic athletes, the best at what they do are people that have achieved greatness that you can learn from and model. Because in my life, when I started seeing that, man, the mentors I was hiring, the things I was investing in were transforming my life, I thought, what if I brought this to other people where they could be like a fly on the wall, watching these conversations go down, take notes and see transformation in their lives. So mess to message has been something that's really propelled not only my career, but since I've been talking about it, it's been something that people have wanted me to share a lot of. I was mentioned in this clip from Russell Brunson in front of Tony Robbins, where I got Tony Robbins' head nod, which is really, really cool. And then also Russell invited me to speak at his event, Funnel Hacking Live, alongside my wife, Amanda. And in that, we spoke on how to turn your mess into your message. And that all came from Again, my experiences, what we saw and how it affected other people. For the people that don't know what turning your mess into your message is, it's literally taking the things that you've struggled with and making it the message or the foundation that you build your success upon. A lot of people just think that, hey, I, I need to not have any problems. I need to just be perfect. And then I'll be able to build a business out of that. Because why would anyone want to hire someone that has struggled before? And that's what I thought. I thought I was going in the health and fitness industry and I always got told your body's your billboard and so you always need to look really good because that's your promotion tool. And I thought that if people knew that I was 60 pounds overweight, that I struggled, that I struggled with my weight, that I struggled through, I, like, I, that people would judge me based on this past experience. Now, the problem with this was is that it made me very insecure, one. I didn't want to share my message with anyone. I didn't think my message mattered because I thought other people have better stories than I do. That can be applied to rags to riches stories, or maybe there's people out there that have made more money than you, been married longer than you, built a bigger business than you have, made more money than you. There's plenty of different things that we could say our story doesn't matter. And I thought that I'd be judged based on my past. So this was even in my relationship with my now wife. When we were engaged, she had never seen a fat photo of me until she stole my wallet, found my license, my first license picture, and saw that I was 60 pounds heavier in that photo. Now, when I think about the emotions of that, I think about the fact that I didn't want people to look at me based on who I was. Because I thought if they saw me based on that, they judge me now as if I'm that person. I'm like, I'm not that person anymore. So that was one of the biggest fears that I had, which impeded on my personal freedom. On top of that, when I started my business, I always had to keep up with this persona that I, I didn't struggle with any of the same things as everyone else because I had to be that rock that didn't struggle with it. I had overcome it all or I was I had the great genetic. I wanted to make sure that I was blessed in this thing and I was just really good at it. Why? Because a lot of times I see these athletes and they were always gifted, right? Michael Jordan was sitting there and even though we hear we got cut from the high school basketball team, you see him shooting hoops when he was a kid. He was a really good player, talented. And that's who people respected is these people that were just born to do what they were doing. But for me, I was not born to be in the health industry at first, right? I was 60 pounds overweight. I struggled with all these different things and emotions. And why did I become 60 pounds over overweight? What did I struggle with? And one of the big problems with being overweight was that everyone could see that I was struggling with something by just looking at me, right? Well, it wasn't like a pornography addiction that you could just hide by not showing anyone. It wasn't like a drinking addiction where I could just drink in private. This was something I had to carry around with me everywhere, which showed all my insecurities. And on top of that, all the photos from that time, I was scared I was going to get judged for that. And one of the best mess to message stories before I get into these three core points that could transform your whole business is that one of the best ones was Eminem. And at the end of that 10 minute video that you click right here, I actually share a super epic part of this. Yeah, you look at Eminem the rapper, not Eminem's the candy. Eminem the rapper, when I look at him, he was a guy that grew up on the wrong side of the tracks in a trailer park, was a white guy in a predominantly black neighborhood, meaning he just felt 
like, oh man, I stick out like a sore thumb. I'm a white rapper. Like this does not fit in with the culture of what's going on here. And he was so nervous, right? There's the song where he says like vomit on my sweater already. Mom's spaghetti, his knees weak, uh, uh, palms are sweaty, right? Like obviously that was backwards yet inside of that, you see like I'm nervous, but on the surface, he looks calm and ready. So altogether, you notice he's nervous. He's someone that, that when he went up on stage, he used to choke, meaning he not, no words would come out. So imagine going up on stage, no words coming out because you're so gripped with anxiety and fear and all these different emotions. And what was the way that he dealt with this? It's a few different ways. Number one, he went up on stage and at the end of his movie, Eight Mile, you could see that finally he just stopped caring what people thought of him and it discovered something that you can use inside of your business. The first thing is he just stopped caring. He just went up there and he's like, listen, I'm going to go up there and do my thing. And one of the things that he did is he started telling all the bad things that had ever happened to him, that he was experiencing all the bad things and hard things he was going through. What he did is he took away the ammunition from everyone else. No one could even battle against him because there's nothing bad they could say because he unveiled his dirty laundry to everyone and it decreased his fear, right? Because now he's like, I have nothing to hide. I'm not scared of anything. He thought he was going to be rejected. He thought that no one was going to listen to him anymore. And here's the few things that happened. All the ammunition from all the haters was taken away from him. Everyone out there liked him more because they now understood him more. They, they didn't look at him like someone who was trying to hide what he's doing. They're like, man, I know all about this guy and he unveiled it to me. And now I, I like him more because they're he's just like me. And one of the core things that he said is he said, everybody in the 313, put your hands up and follow me with a little bit more colorful language. And what he was pointing out was that all these other pro rappers, these guys that were the top of the game, they didn't live in the same cities anymore. They weren't just like them. And everyone else is like, man, I'm from the 313. This guy's from the 313. These guys aren't. And automatically, he had the crowd that loved him. And throughout this experience of sharing what he was going through, everyone connected with him. And he's built the foundation of his career. It's one of the best rappers on the planet from turning his mess, making it his message, unveiling things that were hard to say, took the ammunition away from his competition and his haters, had the people actually connect with him and relate with him in a way that no one else could. And so when I was growing up, 12 years old, that was my inspiration. And so when I was building my business, I had forgot about all of this until one day I had my Eminem moment, hopefully you will as well, where I went up on stage and I was like, I'm going to tell people I was fat. I'm going to tell people why I was fat. And I'm just going to get it over with. I'm just sick and tired of my body's my billboard. I got to be this person that everyone needs to be like. So I went up there and I was like, listen, me and my dad had a falling out. I got super fat. Here's my fat pictures. And here's how I overcame it. And here's what I did. I thought everyone was going to make fun of me. Everyone was going to reject me. I cried during it. I couldn't even finish the talk. And I left there and everyone wanted to buy from me. And everywhere I went after that, I was able to turn my mess into my message. Now, here's three ways that you can take the mess to message scenario and have it grow your business. So step number one is going to give you personal freedom to be able to share your story and realize that your story matters. So you saw step number one, uh, turning your message to your message, how it can dramatically impact your business, is that when we feel like we have to be someone that does not struggle, that's always perfect, that's always hiding all these things that we've done wrong or messed up with in the past, it's scary to put yourself out there because the bigger you get, the more chance that you be found out as a fraud. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of stress. And so one of the first things of sharing your mess to message story, what you struggled, what you've overcome with, overcome what process you took is that it actually gives you personal freedom. Cause again, it takes away all the ammunition that everyone has to make fun of you. And now everyone who stays and buys and likes you, they like you for you. They don't like you for who the version of you that they see. They like you for actually you, even when you unveil yourself to the world. On top of that, you get to see right away that each story that you have is individual to you. It's like a thumbprint. When I talked about that, it's scary sometimes that we think, well, if I share my story, people have done it better. Or they had it worse. That does not matter. People actually relate to your story better than relating to anyone else's. Like some people are just going to be attracted to you rather than the version of the story that you're sharing. Share that authentic story of what you went through, how you overcame it. And the closer that is, you'll see that your story matters uniquely as a thumbprint. Step number two is in product discovery. One of the big things Russell Brunson talks about in Traffic Secrets, he quotes me in Mess to Message, but then expounds upon it in, and I believe it's like page 13, so the first 30 pages. Inside of that, he actually talks about that a lot of business owners, we create our business by experiencing a problem ourselves or in the business and marketplace that we're in. And we, we see the problem 
and we overcome that problem and create a solution to the problem. And now all of a sudden we had this amazing product. So for me, when I was 60 pounds overweight, I struggled. There was nothing out there that was working for me until I found a solution that did. And inside of that was really a difficult process of losing the weight. And then I found a process that was easy to lose the weight. And now I'm going back to the same people that I was and saying, Hey, are you 60 pounds of weight? Are you struggling with these things? I did too. This is my story. And this is what I found to be able to overcome this. And so consistently innovation and entrepreneurship has been created by experiencing personal problems or setbacks or things, struggles that we're going through messes in the business marketplace or personally overcoming those struggles, key emphasis on overcoming, finding a solution, and then going back and helping other people cross that same bridge rather then going through the water, being swept away, being lost downstream, you're creating the bridge that people can go over to overcome these problems in their life. And that's your product or service. So new products and services can be created out of messes that then all of a sudden become overcome, create a uh, solution to these problems. And then that becomes the marketing message that you have to get more clients in the door. And number three is to create a movement. So you have two different sides of mess to message communication. Mess to message can be used in one-to-one -one conversation, in-person events, all the way to social media and telephone call. It doesn't matter what it is, every platform this works on. Yet inside of it, you have people that are discovering you. So think about it. There's two reasons why people follow you. Either you're someone that they want to be like, which is what everyone's doing. He's rich. He's famous. He has a nice car. I want to be like that. Or someone that they're just like. The just like takes all the pressure off of you because now you're just a normal human being. You don't have to measure up to something amazing. People are following you for you. So inside of this, people are discovering your mess message when you put it out on social media. Hey, I struggled with this. This is what I did to overcome it. I struggled with this as just as you are. This is what I did to overcome it. You could use this in a sales conversation when people are struggling. You're like, listen, I was scared to invest in myself as well. I was scared to do X, Y, Z as well as long as it's an authentic story, but probably you got into the business that you're in because you struggled with the same thing as them. You found a solution, you got behind it and you wanted to bring that solution to more people. So tell your story. Yet also, what are the different struggles you had in your life that your common client would have as well? And that's gonna be a way that you can attract people in. So attracting people in is one of the ways, but also you have your community, your culture, your movement, and inside of creating your movement, one of the biggest things that you can do is they've come to you because they're like, man, I love you. I love this company. I love the product. I love the service. Get to continue the movement. You want to be able to share the different parts of your story, your struggles, and the way that you're overcoming it. Because this is the thing. Everyone thinks if I make millions of dollars or if I sell a million products or whatever it is, then everyone will buy from me. Right? There's always this thing of, I need to do this and then I'll be famous enough, I'll be well-known enough, and then everything will be easy from there on out. The problem is, is that most people haven't experienced high levels of success, so they can't relate with it. They can't re -level the, relate with the high levels of success. Think about it in a business sense. If I were to say, hey, my, one of my clients did $3 million in his first 30 days, many of you guys out there may think, well, that's awesome, but you know, he's probably talented, whatever, because you've probably tried before and you failed. And so if I were to share with you a simpler story of someone failing, 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 trying all these different things, and then having success with us in a measurable way that you believe is possible for you, now you'd be interested in what's going on. So inside of cultivating this experience of creating a movement, I want to share not just my successes, but I want to share my failures because while everyone else is sharing their successes, I want to share where I've struggled, things that I've fallen short on, because that's going to make everyone else look at it and go, dude, this guy's just like me. He's struggling with these same things. And it's polarizing in today's day and age when everyone else is just talking about all the successes throughout win to win to win to win. That's amazing to share the win, but what's the process behind the win? What's the struggle to get there? And oftentimes the most legit people in the world, they love hearing the struggle because that's something that they can relate to because we've all struggled. Now, inside of this, you want to make sure that one, you're sharing your scars, right? If you get a cut, it heals to scar. It's not a wound anymore, right? Brene Brown talks about this. No one wants to just have you throw up all these nasty things that are going on in your life, but people, people dig star scars, right? It's like, Hey, look how I got this scar. This is the story behind it. These are the struggles I went through and I was able to heal from it from doing X, Y, and Z. 
and people will actually get more connected with what you're doing, more connected with your message because one, they can relate to you. Two, they know that you're someone that can help uh, them overcome it and you can relate to more people because when you share those struggles, people actually connect with that. Now, a lot of people out there have said something like, man, like, isn't it manipulative to just tell stories so that people connect with you or they, they, they now all of a sudden want to believe the same things that you believe. The big thing about this is being truthful, telling the true story and being authentic in the story that you're telling to go out there and sell a good product and service. See, the problem is there's people out there that do bad things to get people to do stupid things that aren't good for them. That's manipulation. Yet on this other side of this line, you have good tactics, things that work that help transform lives and actually help people authentic stories to get them to products that they actually need to help them transform the life that they want, right? Think about a smoker that needs to overcome uh, their smoking habit and get a product that's going to help them quit smoking. If someone tells their story that helps convince someone to get inspired enough to take action, to grab a product that's going to help them quit smoking and gets them to quit smoking, that right there is actually changing a life. And that's the type of business that you want. So if you want to go check out the in-depth version of this training, you can actually click the link right here. It'll take you straight to a 10 minute video, breaking down the three different ways that you can actually turn your mess into your message, overcoming the objections. So you go out there and do it. And in this video, we just concluded three different ways that turning your mess into your message can actually impact and grow your business right now from the personal freedom that you have to get yourself out there more to going out there and creating new products and services based on struggles and overcoming them and also creating a movement of people that are sharing your message that are connected to what you do that are law lifelong clients so thank you guys so much for joining me on this short episode of the billion dollar brotherhood show and i'm excited to see you on the next episode